The Keys of Marinara was broadcast in six parts from April 11th to May 16th, 1964. Terry Nation is back after cooking up the Daleks a few months earlier, because it's time for a science fiction story and shit, we need a new monster. Looking at the scanner, Barbara asks the doctor, Don't you have color television? Like the next five fucking seasons of the show won't be in black and white. They're on an acid beach, so Susan drops her shoe in Judge Doom style, and these odd things come ashore looking like six foot nerf gun bullets with dorsal fins. Inside them are Vord who have to be the cheapest monster design in the show's history. If you could even call them monsters. More like Illuminati scuba divers. Anyway, there's a big funhouse temple on this beach, where a monk named Arbitan lives. He shows our heroes the MacGuffin, a giant thing that brainwashes people into knowing right and wrong. And the Vord, who can resist the machine's powers, are here to steal it. It's upgraded to work against them, but to power it, four chips that have been scattered around the world are needed. They nope the fuck out of there. But the monk has put a force field around the TARDIS, so they have to help him. I would have just threatened to kill the monk until he put the force field down, but you know, they're good guys. Arbitan gives them nifty watches that allow them to teleport, but as soon as they do, a Vord stabs him to death. The companions walk into an EDM concert that quickly changes to a beautiful wine and dinery in the city of Morphine. At night, some lady puts M&Ms on their sleeping heads, but Barbara's falls off, and the EDM show is back for an encore. <laughs> Barbara wakes up the next morning to see that everything has gone to shit, while the other three still see it as elegant. Barbara runs away, and a creepy man who never blinks, Altos, reports this to a few talking brains with Gary the Snail eye stalks. I love these guys. These are great villains. Only in the 60s. Barbara finds Sabitha. Arbitan's daughter, before being captured by Ian, who is now fully hypnotized. Ian takes her to the brains, where Barbara smashes all their shit and kills them all, it's awesome! Okay, well, actually, she doesn't smash too much, just a jar and a doodad, but still. The people all come to their senses, and the key is found. Altos and Sabitha join them, and they go on to find the second key while the doctor goes for the fourth alone. Which was really just an excellent excuse to give Bill Hartnell some vacation time. I like this next episode in the jungle. Barbara falls for a trap. They think they have the chip, but it's fake. Then Ian is left alone to save Barbara and get the real thing, while the others move on to the third chip. They're both nearly murdered by horrific booby traps when they meet an old man who has the key. This guy is then choked to death by a vine that has come to life, living just long enough to talk in riddles and not really explain where the key is. They find it in a chemical jar, just in time for this now raging jungle to tear the whole house apart, and they poof out of there. Switching it up to an opposite climate, they nearly freeze to death in the tundra, when they're saved by some big bear man. This guy is fucking scary. Alright, he almost rapes Barbara. Ian makes the worst decision ever, and trades his precious travel dial for a fur coat and a bag of raw meat to go find Altos. It turns out this guy has everybody's travel dials and the found keys. When Ian does find Altos tied up, they barely outrun stock footage of wolves, and they then force the big bear man to take them to the ice cave where Susan and Sabitha are. The bear guy escapes due to Ian's stupidity, but that's okay, they found the key. It's surrounded by four ancient frozen warriors, who are so obviously still alive that the only shocking bit about it is when Ian pushes one down a hole. They run to the bear guy's house to get their watches, and he's killed by one of these frozen warriors. Teleporting away, Ian finds himself in the next key room. But there's a dead guy. And then he's clearly not hit in the back of the head by another guy, but Ian obliges and falls over unconscious anyway. Ah! This guy then steals the key. Of course, Ian finds himself guilty of murder and stealing the key, unless proven innocent. The, the doctor walks in like a real OG at the perfect time to save his ass. I don't know how courtroom drama meshes with Doctor Who, though. It's all played a bit too straight for a whimsical time-traveling TV show. But I quite like the character Taryn, the chief investigator, who's very stern but fair, rather than one-sided, out-to-kill Ian villain that you'd expect. The doctor guesses that the man guarding the key room, Aiden, was involved in the crime. So Barbara and Susan, of all people, go to interrogate him. 
He nearly slaps the shit out of Susan, but they leave, so he immediately starts beating his wife instead. Not seen on screen, but still, it's heard. When the doctor blames Aiden in the courtroom, he gets nervous, claims he was forced to do it, and is then shot by somebody in the room, but somehow nobody saw who it was. Apparently, Susan is kidnapped from the room right after this. Once again, with nobody seeing it, we don't even see it. But she then calls Barbara, saying, They're gonna kill me! They have cool phones in marijuana, by the way. Barbara, Altos, and Sabitha figure out that the beaten wife captured Susan and killed her husband. She's in cahoots with someone else who was trying to get the key from the doctor, apparently. So why they didn't extort the doctor with Susan, but called Barbara instead, makes no sense to me. How do they even know the doctor knows where the key is? Ian's prosecutors don't know that. We don't even know that at this point. Are they talking about the other keys? I don't know. Anyway, the key is inside the murder weapon. Seriously. So the doctor and some guards stake out the evidence room and capture the guy when he comes in to steal it. And the evildoer is... Honestly, I don't know. All these people look the same. Back at Arbitan's castle, Altos and Sabitha are captured by the Vords. You know... Maybe if, just once, these people traveled together, this shit wouldn't happen. The Void Leader goes for the old wolf and grandma's clothing bit, trying to fool Ian and Susan into thinking he's Arbitan. But come on, he's got a fucking traffic cone on his dome. Ian gives him the fake key from the jungle, and this makes the machine blow up somehow, killing the Void, and that's it. The serial gets a bad rep, and a lot of people say, Aw, there goes Terry Nation trying to make the next Dalek and failing hardcore. Well, I don't think Terry would have only wrote the Vord into two parts of a six-episode series if that were the case. They're just something to bookend our plot, not to be groundbreaking. The real meat and potatoes are all these different settings we're getting here, each with their own unique threat. The brain monsters, the living jungle, the rapist, the justice system. This makes Marinus a dynamic planet. Something Doctor Who and other popular sci-fi universes often fail at. Hoth is an ice planet, and or a forest moon. Skara was a jungle with a city. And there's nothing wrong with that when it's used sparingly. But when all your planets only have one defining topographical feature, you start looking lazy. Not to say that's not realistic, I mean, look at Mars. But here we get something familiar. Earth-like. I wouldn't write Nation off as a one-trick pony either. Sure, he didn't write a non-Dalek Doctor Who script for years after this serial's lackluster reception. And looking back now, it really feels like he oversaturated us with all the Dalek stuff. But Dalek Mania was a very real thing, and you can't blame him for capitalizing on their success. Plus, he went on to do great work on The Avengers, The Persuaders, Survivors, Blake 7, MacGyver. So cut the guy a damn break. I like this serial, honestly. It doesn't live up to the sacredness of the last couple, but it's pulpy, silly, a great deal of fun. Kind of like the last three episodes of An Unearthly Child. So give it a try, watch the second and third episodes especially, they're my favorite, and tell me what you think. Please like, subscribe, comment, support if you can. Thanks for your time and space, this is Bob Boddingham, Dematerializing. That was a long one.